Hey everybody, welcome back to another Judgment Commentary of Hana Monogatari, but today we're going to be checking out episode 3. But last time on episode 2, the most important thing that we learned in that episode was that Kaiki did not die after all. Nope, he survived his injuries somehow and decided to make an appearance in this episode. Yeah, as it would seem, his injuries were not quite as fatal as he led us to believe and he managed to survive either because he just managed to get away before bleeding to death, or perhaps someone just happened to walk by and rescued him. Who knows? But I suppose what's more important than him being alive is what he did in this episode, because you see, when Suruga decided to head out of town to look for her old friend Numachi, Kaiki happened to meet her at the train station, and of course the second she sees him she just takes off and runs because, well, she was warned about Kaiki by Senji Gahara and Araragi, but... But somehow Kaiki is just an amazing sprinter and just caught up with her and got in her way. I guess it's because he apparently actually has really good running form. Who would have guessed? Also because... Suruga's a little bit out of practice with her running skills and also a bit off balance thanks to the loss of the monkey hand, but... I'm just gonna say that Kaiki's good at running. And after convincing her to trust him just a little bit, they sit down, get some food, and have a nice chat. Which tends to happen a lot with Kaiki. They talked for a bit about Suruga's mother and how Kaiki, you know, felt about her. At first he was trying to, you know, brush aside his feelings for her, but Suruga, she's too sharp for that. She was able to pick up on the fact that he loved her some time ago, back when they were in college, but then after she was lost to him, he moved on and found a new love. Money. Because unlike Senji- ooh, I can't talk today. Because unlike Suruga's mother, money is replaceable. So it doesn't matter how much money he loses, he can always get some more. But when it comes to genuine loved ones, you can't replace them. He also issued her a warning saying that some collector is going to come by and try to take the monkey's paw and that she should just hand it over. Don't even put up a fight, just give it to him. I mean, it's not like she really needs it anymore. I mean, she never really needed it at all, now that I think about it, but... Okay, uh, I'm not sure what <laughs> good would come of that, probably nothing, given that he straight up said that they want that monkey's paw so that they can create a devil out of it. Probably wouldn't be super wise to just give it to him, but... Alright, I trust you enough, Kaiki. But, as one of you said in a comment, I can see the different position that this arc could have so far if you saw it in the original release order versus the anime release order because if you looked at Kaiki's arc from that perspective it's a little bit different because we knew Kaiki as being completely untrustworthy and despicable and then we saw in Koi Monogatari that there was more depth to him than that, he was a lot more nuanced than you expected. But then we get to Hana, and it's him arguing that he's more nuanced and in-depth than we thought. So if you saw it in the original order, it would be untrustworthy, him arguing that he's more nuanced, and then us seeing that he's more nuanced, which I guess it technically works in both ways, but if you saw it in the intended order, it'd be like, oh, pff, yeah, right, Kaiki, there's no way you're as nuanced as you're claiming you are. You're just freaking lying about it. But because we've seen that he is, we understand that he is actually telling the truth. And he's not just being defensive. But of course, Suruga does not know this. But now, the hunt is on for Numachi. The Fire Sisters are going to be spreading out, trying to find her, but we'll see how that goes. For now, let's begin. Oh, wow. There she is. Just sitting at her desk. Heard you were looking for me. What's with the hand? Oh. Wait, just straight up stole it? Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, hey, speak for yourself. That was a ritual to take the monkey paw off her? I knew it had something to do with you. Well then, he did say to just let you take it, so... Unless he's really pushed, otherwise... But he said someone would come and take it, but it was already gone. Hmm. If so... She wants to make a devil? But why would you want to do that? Watch the hands. We could talk right now. I don't see why not. <laughs> Gotta talk after school at the gym. Because it has narrative significance. Because at a gym is where you play basketball. Okay, so. When she grabbed her up, that was, uh... The setup for stealing the arm. Somehow. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna have to think about how that makes sense, but... <laughs> so, <laughs> does she have a devil leg then while she's at it, and that's why it's all tied up, or is it genuinely injured? <laughs> I mean, just the idea that she wanted to call herself uh, a devil, you know, Sir Devil, should have been enough of an indicator that she might be the one here trying to create one. I guess she wants to make a devil of herself. This is getting <laughs> interesting. The plot is definitely thickening. <laughs> I'm not sure if she even needed the help of the fire sisters to find her. I think she just happened to stumble upon her in the classroom. Or maybe they knew she was there and then pointed her in the right direction. Yeah, Suriga ain't the devil this time. Dropped your crutch. I mean, <laughs> let's see how fair it is. You seem pretty capable. You gonna go for a slam dunk? Nah. <laughs> Just for a three-pointer. I think. I don't know enough about basketball. Swat. Wow, she's kind of owning you right now. For someone who retired due to a leg injury, she's doing pretty good. Okay, okay, pretty good. Still can't quite make it. And you're keeping her at bay, but, well, for now. Yeah, landed one. But still... Yeah, no dunks. Aw, who doesn't like dunks? Bit exaggerated.
Good point. That's professional basketball. What's with the lines? Oh, wait, that's just part of the court. Or is it? Now that's what Frieza would do. Indeed. <laughs> Just like her killing all the people faster than her. Seems like you already know. Yeah. <laughs> It spoke volumes. It's a good story, right? Relatively, but <laughs> in terms of executing them. Ah, come on. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, she did a spit take and she didn't have anything to spit out. Oh my, this is getting real. No more grabbing. We've had enough of that. You could, unless this is something you desire. It's admitting defeat in some ways. Yeah, misery. You just refuse to participate. And what will we do then? Oh, just on the cheek. Whatever. You duped her. Yes. <laughs> what, what was your first clue? I'd recommend not playing with fire at all, ideally. Hey, there's the dunk. Boom! <laughs> Just shatters it. Nah. Not this time. Magic leg, man. <laughs> yeah, instead you're going to take all those sins upon yourself there, aren't you? Yeah, those sins are yours. Why are we in a shower? Oh, I mean, originally, maybe. Whoa! It's only on the palm, yeah. Well, thank you. What about the second? Oh, 
Oh no, it's a stampede. <laughs> so, breaking. <laughs> That's the same freaking thing. No, it's not. Okay, try to explain. Yeah, that's breaking it. It just takes longer. Sure it is. It's a Hana story. And the reveal. Yep. Monkey leg. Knew it. Pretty demonic. It's not. And we're just going for a walk. Okay, so you did break it? Ain't that nice? <laughs> yeah, sucks to be them. Doi. Doi. It's multifaceted. <laughs> well, that's just their self-esteem issues. That's their problem, not yours. But if everyone had talent, no one would, you see. I mean, everyone has talents of some capacity. It's just that not everyone has the same talents. I gotcha. And then when you graduated from middle school, you graduated from basketball, you see. You could have tried the other sport known as football then. I mean, you still use your foot in that one on occasion. Depends on the player. I see we're going down the infamous staircase, by the way. Doubt it. I don't think it was a punishment at all, necessarily. And then, you wish that your leg was healed, yada yada. It happens. Well, yeah. <laughs> you suffered a grievous injury. They felt bad. They realized they treated you too harshly. Does it need to be anything more than that? 
Yeah, but maybe you'd feel better about it. And then they did. And then you ran, of course. An event. They gave you the idea? Look, there she is, right there. <laughs> Well, that might not necessarily be the case. Maybe she just wanted to confide in you because she thought you might understand. <laughs> Either way, that's what gave you the idea to do exactly what you thought she was doing. Well, if you didn't want sympathy, why would talking to someone else who's miserable be the path to that? Yep. I already deduced this much. Yeah, you always had a taste for it. What's with the apocalyptic view? Pretty miserable. Ouch. <laughs> I would hope you weren't trying to make it worse. Even though I didn't. <laughs> And she's like, what? <laughs> I don't know how you're going to do that, but please do. Naturally. A considerable one. Then she comes back and says, hey, you did it. My problems are gone. Excellent work, you cheeky devil. And did that make you feel better? I would assume so. Until it can't. Possibly. It's a symbiotic relationship. <laughs> Each of you gets something here. Nah. <laughs> Depression will do that to you.
the misery collector, the girl who wants to make herself a devil. I mean, assuming she only needs to get the limbs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is not sarcasm. What happens when you go full devil, huh? Where'd she even get the leg? <laughs> and she just plucks him right out of the air. Okay. I don't think she's going to take that road. Either way, she could do that. <laughs> You're the one holding the cards right now? I don't think you're actually in a position to bargain that much, but... I guess we're finding out about it next time because we're running out of time here. Exactly, see? Too late. Yeah, yeah. Mm, that was a lot of talking. <laughs> They're explaining her whole tragic backstory. And I already had a pretty good read on a lot of what she was doing. That she was making herself feel better by hearing the misery of others. Which uh, is interesting. She's also seemingly projected it onto to them. That the people who are telling her of their problems are telling her so that they'll feel better because, oh, at least I'm not as bad as this person. Right? That they, she thinks they see her as pitiable. And that's why they're going to confide in her. And maybe that's true, at least in some cases. But, like, she specifically said below them. That's how she said that they saw her. And originally I was going to say, well, the people who think you're Sir, De Sir Devil don't think that you're below them. And I was like, technically, a devil, you know, like, it's like a monster. And monsters are generally seen as below uh, humanity, just, uh, on principle, so they technically would see her as being below her, if not in the same context. But I'm not even sure that's what it is in the case of that first girl coming in to talk to her. I think it's a pessimistic look to it, you know? Man, we don't get any previews. This was the Numachi monologue episode, but a good one at that, honestly. It was interesting to hear straight from her perspective exactly what happened in her past because apparently yeah she genuinely did break her leg that was not a falsehood she did and her breaking it you know sent her into a downward spiral of misery as it would for pretty much anybody in that circumstance and it was only when a fellow classmate decided to confide their pain and misery into her that she got a new purpose in life which was to hear out other people's pain and misery to make herself feel better about her own pain and misery, which is what she was accusing them of doing. She thought she was only going to speak to her because she saw her as pathetic. That, well, my problems are bad, but if I tell them that this person whose problems are worse, then maybe I'll feel better. Thus giving her the idea of doing the exact same thing. And somehow down the line, she makes a deal with the devil fixes up her leg, but then still continues to do the devil thing, and actually seeks out more <laughs> devil parts to collect. Thinking back to what Kaiki said last time about uh, the collector coming in to take the, the monkey's hand, like, when he warned her of that, she had already taken it. <laughs> I guess it's possible 
that he didn't know she had taken it yet, but his uh, warning still rang true to an extent because he said to just let her take it, but now she's not just letting her take it, she's uh, confronting her about it, saying to give it back. But who knows, maybe we'll get some nice rich context out of her devil story, which I'm assuming they're gonna focus on next time. They just didn't have enough time to <laughs> include it in here because there was already plenty enough storytelling. This arc continues to be very unique from the others, you know, because it's probably been the most disconnected from a lot of the other arcs so far. It's pretty much entirely centered around Suruga and her past, as well as how that pertains to Numachi, which is definitely an interesting change of direction. This is definitely not the direction I thought this arc was going to go, but so far, I'm intrigued. Yeah, Numachi seems to be playing up some kind of dark parallel to Saruga-esque thing right now because they both made that deal with the devil to, you know, give them something that they thought that they were missing, and then, well, Saruga turned against it, it seems that Numachi is embracing it, even going so far as to try to make even more deals and get even more monkey limbs. It's... Hmm. Heck, she even did the same thing that Suruga did by, you know, pretending that her leg was still injured by keeping it wrapped up and going around at the crutch when she no longer needed it. It's what Suruga did at the beginning of this arc. When she lost the monkey's paw, she still wrapped up her arm, even though she didn't need to. Just gotta keep up appearances. Only the circumstances are kind of flipped. Anyway, I think that's all I have to say on the matter for now, guys, but thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed, subscribe to be updated on more. That would be great. Next time we got episode four, the penultimate chapter, as I like to say, we'll see just what that deal with the devil was. I mean, really, we know it just taking that deal did effectively heal her leg, whether or not the deal was specifically to heal her leg, I'm not entirely confident about, but gonna say, it was probably that, right? Although, by the time she did that, she had already moved on, in a way, and found her new purpose out of hearing other people's misery, but all of that was to try to cleanse her own misery, so maybe she thought she could <laughs> fix it all the way by healing her leg. Didn't work, though. We'll see. Not sure. <laughs> That'll be next time. Maybe I can actually have that one ready tomorrow. That'd be nice. I'd like to get some of these out two days in a row. But before I drag this out any further, just make sure to leave any comments informing me of any neat details. I noticed there was a lot of visual imagery going on with this. I don't know if it was just to look cool or if it could actually mean anything, but knowing this, it probably meant a lot of things. But if you have any insights on that, that'd be great. But that's it, guys. Till we meet again, I will see you guys all later!